NASA has detected the heartbeat of Voyager 2. There is a chance to regain contact with the probe faster. Efforts to re-establish contact with Voyager 2 have been successful. NASA controllers detected a signal that could potentially restore communication with the spacecraft after accidentally sending a wrong command that caused Voyager II's antenna to deflect. On Monday, NASA announced that it had lost contact with the Voyager 2 spacecraft. Communication was cut off after sending a series of commands that contained an incorrect command to deflect the antenna by two degrees. Just a few days after the first information, the agency announced that it had detected the heartbeat signal of the probe located nearly 20 billion kilometers from Earth. This information suggests that we will probably be able to resume communication earlier, and we will not have to wait for the settings reset, which is expected in October. The signal was detected while scanning the sky. Detection confirms that Voyager 2 is still transmitting and in good condition. Mission controllers lost contact with the spacecraft nearly two weeks ago after sending an erroneous command that tilted its antenna two degrees. This slight change in orientation was enough to cut off communication with the spacecraft. The signal was detected thanks to the Deep Space Network antenna network. It worked. We see the signal. It's a bit like listening to the heartbeat of a spaceship. So we know that Voyager 2 is alive and functioning. This has lifted our spirits, said Suzanne Dodd, head of the Voyager project. However, the signal is too weak to read any data. While the detection of the signal is a good sign, the spacecraft has yet to receive new commands. The next hope of making contact will come later this week. Mission controllers intend to use the Canberra Deep Space Communication Complex CDSCC which contains a series of antennas receiving daily data, to send the correct commands towards Voyager 2. However, any action takes time. The probe is now so far away that command packets sent from Earth take 18 hours to reach the machine. Will Voyager 2 receive and implement corrections sent from NASA? This is not known. If this fails, you will have to wait until October 15 for an automatic reset of the antenna settings, which should restore communication. The spacecraft is programmed to reset its orientation several times a year to maintain communication with Earth. Until then, Voyager 2 will follow its planned trajectory. But no one is going to wait until October. 
We are currently generating a new command packet to try to steer the spacecraft's antenna toward Earth, Dodd said. Adding that there is only a small probability that the maneuver will work. Voyager 2 and its twin Voyager I were launched into space in 1977, 16 days apart. Both probes flew past the outer planets of the solar system before heading towards the edge of the heliosphere. The outermost layer of the Sun's atmosphere that separates our solar system from interstellar space. Voyager I was the first to cross the heliosphere, reaching interstellar space in 2012. It is currently about 23.8 billion kilometers from our planet, making it the most distant man-made object. Voyager 2, on the other hand, crossed the boundaries of the heliosphere in 2018. Both structures are powered by radioisotope thermoelectric generators, which are getting worse every year. According to NASA estimates, around 2025 generators may no longer be able to provide adequate power for operation. Perhaps a system upgrade can improve the situation. Earlier this year, improvements were made to Voyager II's systems in hopes of extending its lifespan. Finnish scientists produce coffee in a laboratory. Perhaps in the future coffee will come from a laboratory, not from a plantation. Finnish scientists have developed a way to produce coffee from plant cells grown in bioreactors. This process produces a brown powder that, after roasting, can be brewed in exactly the same way as conventional coffee. And what does it taste like? Tube coffee is less bitter, which may be due to the slightly lower caffeine content. A team of scientists from the VTT Technical Research Center of Finland believe that their method will reduce the harmful impact of large plantations on the environment. The coffee they produce is not ground from beans but grown in a bioreactor from coffee plant cells under strictly controlled conditions. It's really coffee. There is nothing but coffee in our product, says Heiko Risha, who led the research. After roasting, the powder can be brewed in exactly the same way as conventional coffee. Risha's team used the same cell culture methods used to produce meat in the laboratory. With growing demand and numerous sustainability challenges in traditional farming, there is an urgent need for alternative ways to produce coffee. Due to the high demand for coffee, more and more acreage is needed to produce enough product. 
leading to deforestation, especially in sensitive areas of the rainforest. Coffee is a problematic product, says Risha, partly because rising global temperatures are making existing plantations less efficient. This forces farmers to cut down more and more areas of rainforest for new crops. Then there is the issue of transport and the use of fossil fuels. So it makes sense to look for alternative solutions, argues Risha. His team is conducting an analysis of how mass production of test tube coffee could affect the climate. According to the researchers, their method requires less manpower and fewer resources than conventional coffee plantations. We already know that, for example, our water footprint is much smaller than when plants grow in farmland, explains Risha. The key to the success of a lab-grown strain will be its taste. However, for now, only a specially trained panel of analysts is authorized to sample the brew due to its novel food status. What's more, they can't swallow the drink yet, explains Heiki Isala, an expert in sensory perception who leads the testers in the project. Compared to regular coffee, Tube coffee is less bitter, which may be due to the slightly lower caffeine content, says Isala. We have to admit that we are not professional coffee roasters, and a lot of the coffee's flavor comes from the roasting process, adds Risha. Others are also looking for a more sustainable alternative to coffee. In September, Seattle-based startup Atomo announced it had raised $11.5 million for its molecular coffee, which has the same flavor as natural coffee but is made from a different organic material. However, studies in the US and Canada suggest widespread public distaste for lab-produced food substitutes. Despite the environmental benefits, some food policymakers have warned that a widespread shift to lab-grown products could hit coffee producers' livelihoods. In Helsinki, Risha estimates it will take at least four years for the lab-grown coffee to gain legal approval and commercial support that will put it on store shelves alongside its conventional cousin. The project is of particular importance in Finland, which, according to the statistical group Statista, ranks among the top coffee consumers in the world. With an average consumption of 10 kilograms of coffee per person per year,